continuing the tradition. Here he goes. See you later. He's got it on the record. Touchdown. Touchdown. ABC Sports. Championship Television. Last week, Miami played a Virginia Tech team that took advantage of one hurricane mistake after another, en route to a victory over the conference rival. Today, Miami returns to the Orange Bowl, hoping to regain that King swagger with a D and an offense led by athletic and brash talking tight end Kellen Winslow Jr. We're pissed. We're ticked off, and, um, you know, it's unfortunate for them. The Tennessee Volunteers, led by quarterback Casey Clawson, invade Miami, where they hope to make a statement of their own. You are looking live at the Orange Bowl in Miami as we welcome you to the BCS Spotlight Game presented by ADT. Tennessee of the SEC pays a visit on Miami of the Big East and the Hurricanes are trying to snap back coming off a rare regular season defeat last Saturday at the hands of Virginia Tech. Well, along with Jack Arut and Gary Danielson, I'm Brent Musburger, and on a muggy Saturday afternoon, we certainly welcome you to the Orange Bowl, the BCS. That is part of the storyline today. The Canes, after the loss, dropped to fourth. They must win out, hope to jump past Florida State and USC, hold off the other one-loss teams. But a fresh wrinkle, folks. The SEC says it will use the BCS standings as the final tiebreaker to determine whether it's Tennessee, Georgia, or Florida going to Atlanta for their title game. So lots of things are very meaningful here this afternoon, even though it's a non-conference game. And Gary, what a confrontation between two quarterbacks. Brent, you're right. This is such a big game. Casey Clawson, the veteran now, has done very well in his career on the road. But they have not this year been producing a lot of big plays. I think his team wants a fast start, and they'll be looking at Clawson. On the other side of the field, Brock Berlin, this is the first time he's been benched in his career. First time he's lost the game in his career. I think he must get off to a fast start. His coaches, his teammates, and the fans will be watching him and see how he reacts to last week's bad game. Very important for him to get off the line. It's so rare for Larry Coker, his first regular season loss, squaring off against Philip Fulmer of Tennessee. Right now, that sends you to John, Terry, and Craig in New York. Brent, thanks a lot. This season kind of fell apart for Tennessee somehow, and it may have fallen apart for Miami after last week's loss to Virginia Tech. Things have to start at the defensive end of the football for Miami. And, and that's the strength of their football team. It really is. I mean, Miami's defense gets the opponent off the field. Only 18% of the time do they convert. So that means their offense is going to get the football. Now, can they do something with it? Because Brock Berlin, the pressure is going to be squarely on his shoulders to succeed and score points. Yeah, I think they've got a controversy at quarterback because last week against Virginia Tech, they yanked Brock Berlin for two costly interception they put in Derek Crudup. Now if Brock Berlin makes a mistake, do you yank him and put Derek in? It's not how he plays it, who plays at quarterback. And it gets in the questions of the minds of the players as well. Other games we'll be following today. Everybody's chasing Oklahoma, number one team in the nation. Can Texas A&M slow them down? And in the Big Ten, both these teams, the Spartans and the Buckeyes, still in the hunt for the Big Ten title. We'll see you at halftime and scores and highlights throughout the day. It's coming up next, Tennessee and Miami. Never before in head coach Larry Coker's coaching career at Miami's, he had to prepare a team after a loss in the regular season. So, Coach, how did you do it this weekend? Well, we'll find out. We had a great week of practice, and we're expecting to play well today. Good luck, Coach. Thank you. Miami won the toss and deferred. They will use Mark Gent today as their kickoff man with the ball on the tee at the 35-yard line. And back deep, Corey Larkins for Tennessee. He's the man in the middle. Derek Tinsley on the near side of 23. So 23 is the man that Tennessee wants to field this standing on the five-yard line. Coach Philip Fulmer anxious about this, realizing with the, uh, with the change by the SEC as far as the tiebreaker is concerned, this might as well be a conference game here today. Fielded by Tinsley. Larkins, let me check that. And Larkins... 
to the 27-yard line and out of bounds. So that was Corey Larkins, the main man, number 23. And let's meet the senior Tennessee quarterback. I'm Casey Clawson, quarterback from Northridge, California. Casey Clawson now with 30 career wins, trailing only. Peyton Manning dashes out from the uh, sideline. His center, his longtime center, Scott Wells, is a new papa, ladies and gentlemen. His lovely wife, Julie, giving birth to a boy the other evening. So, Scott Wells, number 64, as a papa, is ready to snap it for the first time. To Casey Clawson out of Northridge, California, and we'll be underway in the Orange Bowl. They open with three wide receivers, and the slot man to the left starts in motion. And then they come back with Jabari Davis, the junior, as we take a look at the principal financial group starting lineups. And there is Scott, 64, flanked by Herrera, Douglas, Young, and Munoz round out that offensive line. Now, returning to the lineup is Cedric Houston here today, we are told. But uh, they don't know how many reps they can get out of him. And the key here, as far as the punter is concerned, Colquitt, probably the best in the nation. 60 punts of 50 or more yards. And Clausen's first pass, not pressed, drops it off to Troy Fleming. And number 27 slips out of the backfield against this Miami defense, which is really shorthanded here today. They've lost two tackles, Orion Harris and Santonio Thomas. They'll have three men in rotation as tackles. It means that Jonathan Vilma and DJ Williams must really step up. They're also shorthanded in the defensive backfield. Antrell Rowe was suspended late for fighting, and that means that Kelly Jenkins is back in the Hurricane starting lineup. As far as the Canes are concerned, at least Jennings has some game experience. Third down and short for Tennessee. The power run for the first down by Jabari Davis from Stone Mountain, Georgia. Really interesting start for Tennessee. They came out in three wide receivers and forced Miami to go nickel on the first play of the game. That means Miami, after they lose roll, are down to their third and fourth corners on the field already in the football game. Good strategy by Tennessee. On balance line here by Tennessee. Casey Clawson and Tennessee beaten in Knoxville last year by Miami and beaten soundly by Clawson lasted only one half because of shoulder and ankle injuries. There was a jump on the right side and they get it off. There's a penalty flag on this. The right side of the Miami defensive line appeared to jump early. And the flag comes down with our first penalty here. SEC crew and it's a good one is is offside against that. Thomas Ritter is our referee here today. This crew Worked that seven overtime game between Arkansas and Kentucky. We didn't see much body fat down in the official's locker room last week, folks. So it's a strong SEC crew. And with the five yard penalty, ball is moved now to the close to the 45 yard line here on the first serve. Clausen, who has been studying this Miami defense all week long taking another look at how they established that base 4-3 that folks are so familiar with here in South Florida and around the country. There's the draw play. Davis cuts back shoulder first. Yes, now here is what Clawson had to say when we asked him about the Miami D. Their defense, you know, scores a lot of points or, or kind of sets up their offense with um, a lot of big plays. So I think the biggest thing we got to do is, is not, you know, hurt ourselves, you know, not give them um, anything easy and, you know, take care of the football and, we have opportunities to make um, big plays on offense. No, we got to make those plays. Right now, Clawson and Tennessee very content to try and keep the Miami D on the field. And Corey Larkins is on the field as a receiver. And again, a jump in the middle of that defensive line. And another penalty flag comes flying. Well, if it's Miami, it's going to be the big number 75 again for the second time jumping off. Gary, it must be the cadence now. Yes, I believe it is. Offside. On the defense, five-yard penalty results in the first half. That's really where the veteran Clawson has taken advantage of a wired defense right now. He knows this Miami defense. They lose a game. Their front four, every, all their coaches have been telling him, you haven't been making plays. Clawson comes out and uses the snap count. A lot of discipline from Tennessee. Jabari Davis. Set seven yards behind Clausen as the tailback. 
into the middle and DJ Williams number 17 take a look at what these two teams need to do to win this game I think that both teams need to do about the same thing they both want a fast start they're especially looking at Brock Berlin Tennessee has been a slow starting team all year Randy Shannon defensive coordinator said we cannot allow a team to drive the ball at us we've got to win the field position and big play where are those big plays from Miami and Tennessee where are they this year this Tennessee formation is strong to the left with the tight end and they're going to bring the end around looking for a block and they don't get it. This will be well short of the first down. Mark Jones, who does a little bit of everything there. Number 10 from Wallingford, Pennsylvania. The senior, we expect to see him on defense before this day is done, too. Watch the All-American candidate, number 17, DJ Williams, right here. He turns the play in. Right side, he really screen, turns it in right to all the help, to safety and everybody. Good job by DJ Williams to turn that reverse inside. Cedric Houston on the field for the first time for Tennessee. Clausen and the Volunteers facing a third and a seven. The Canes in that familiar press coverage with the corners up tight on the line of scrimmage. Clausen reads it. Pulls back. Got one on one down the sideline. Goes over the top. Incomplete. And James Banks, the one-time quarterback covered by Sean Taylor. Clausen read the coverage, had what he wanted, went down the sideline one on one, but it was incomplete. And now we will see if Colquitt who could be a major factor in this game, can drop another one inside the 20-yard line. Besides being an extremely strong-legged punter, this former soccer star from Knoxville is also very good at directional punting. And the Canes, as a result, put two men back deep, not knowing which side Colquitt will attack. He went to his right, and it is caught out of bounds uh, in the down close to the 20-yard line. We see the side judge coming up to the other side of it right now, getting a signal for the referee, and it's at the 25-yard line. So Colquitt will not be satisfied with that 19-yarder, and Fulmer with a few words for his All-American candidate. Timeout. I'm Brad Berlin, junior quarterback from Shreveport, Louisiana. And has this young man ever been under fire down here in South Florida this week after the two costly interceptions a week ago against Virginia Tech in a rare regular season loss? But he completes his first pass of the game to the fullback. Kobia coming out of the backfield, and it's a first down on the Kings' opening snap from center. Tennessee comes after Berlin, first play of the game, and Berlin Brock makes a great read on this. Watch top of the screen. The linebackers, both of them from the strong side, come, read it, dump it off to your fullback. That'll inhibit that blitz from coming further in the game. Jared Payton, son of the legendary Walter. The eye back now. His first carry of the game, and he powers to the 44, as we see. Our principal financial group starting lineup. Now, Eric Winston was a tight end. He looked at the depth chart during the spring training period and said, Coach, why don't I go to tackle, and I think I could win an Outland Trophy for you. But they are looking for playmakers here. They do not have that breakaway speed out of the backfield. Kellen Winslow says, just throw me the blankety-blank football. And Brian Monroe, the freshman punter, struggled against the Hokies. They took the kickoff duties away from him to have him concentrate today on just punting. Second down and five for the Canes, coming out from their own 44-yard line. Peyton again, right straight ahead. This will be third and short with Jabril Wilson, the safety, making the stop for this defense. Now, here is the line that will be under fire all day long. They simply must stand up to the Canes offensive line if Tennessee is to have any chance here today. Very active linebacker from California. Simon the leading tackler. And of course in the defensive backfield, Baker out with that injury again. The freshman Corey Campbell, the free safety. Miami very aware of it. They said that Campbell, as far as they could tell from looking at the tapes of the win over Duke, played quite well from Coach Fulmer last week. Third down. Short drop for Berlin. Winslow's first catch free on the far side. And Kelly Winslow inside 
the 35 yard line to the 32 a 21 yard gain and Berlin starts out red hot well if you blitz Miami and you have a thinking quarterback and a tight end that can shake away from people you only need to throw the ball three or four or five yards to get big plays you got hit by Campbell at the end but that doesn't bother a tight end like Kellen Winslow three yard passes for big first downs you're making it easy for Brock Berlin right now the way they're blitzing him at the volunteer 32 in Berlin who grew up in the shotgun formation in high school back in Louisiana and up under Steve Spurrier before he transferred now takes off and goes nowhere second down and long and uh, we asked Kellen Winslow about his feeling about the Miami team I still feel we are the best team in the country. We just had turnovers, and when we have turnovers, we lose. Short and to the point, and one of the best interviews that I've been around in college football. He minced no words about what he thinks about the BCS standings. You'll see that at halftime, when Miami ranked below Florida State, a team they whipped up on up in Tallahassee. Of course, he didn't say anything about being ranked ahead of Virginia Tech, but what the heck. Back in the shotgun now is Berlin, number seven. Stands tall, fires incomplete. And the intended target was Kevin Beard and not especially well thrown that time. Career with coverage for the Volunteers. Well, one of the things that uh, has been a challenge for Brock Berlin is it's a very young receiving crew. Kevin Beard is not, but this is not a veteran group. They're learning at the same time. You got Brock Berlin learning with young receivers, and there has been some thought around this Miami camp that there might be some stealing of hand signals. So you see Miami is gonna have them brought in by two players. Both of the quarterbacks are gonna be signaling men. And they're also bringing in a receiver on every play to make sure Tennessee isn't stealing them. Miami burns a timeout. Mark Jones had checked in defensively in this set. So we'll take a break. Mark Jones, who we've seen already catch a pass on the field for the first time kept out of last week's game saving him obviously for the Canes and uh, the defensive lineman with a few words there for Brock Berlin Dickerson who is about eight yards deep in the backfield the senior from uh, Memphis dead ball Offside. We got ANSI defense, defensive linemen on both sides. Let's check in now with Jack Aru. Jack. Well, Brent, there's no surprise that you're going to see Mark Jones all over the place. He built his resume in high school doing exactly that. In fact, at Wallingford, Pennsylvania, he played five positions, Brent, including the kicker. The versatility helped his team to a 51 and 4 record while he was in high school. Well, Jack, uh, right now it's a little bit easier because the defensive linemen, as far as Miami is concerned, they go from third and nine to third and four for Brock Berlin and uh, again the volunteers trying to get heat Berlin stands rips it in there for a first down into the red zone and Ryan Moore the redshirt freshman from Orlando with his first catch of the game Brock Berlin stayed to the right side the whole time this time it was a slant he goes back three steps he's going to throw to Ryan Moore on the slant he looks he looks he looks Ryan Moore stopped looked like it was more of a hitch than a slant pass that time and it's a good thing it was from Jabril Hill number eight was playing a robber right in the middle and he'd have picked it off it was a slant Keller Winslow Jr. to the right side of the formation lined up as a regular tight end here on first and ten breaks down Berlin looking hit deflected and almost intercepted on the ricochet he was hit Kevin Burnett, the junior, then on top of Brock Berlin as Kellen Winslow was the intended target all the way that time. Jared Payton that time is going to come into the picture right here to get the block. He gets run right over. That's what caused it. Payton goes up, bad block, kind of dips his shoulder, and Kevin Burnett runs right over him to Brock Berlin. And now one of the Canes, Vernon Carey, a starting left guard, is shaken up. He comes off to the sideline. Second down and 10. And this time Winslow will set up to the wide side, off to the left side of the field. And Peyton will follow his block for a couple of yards. And Kevin Simon making the stop. Well, Oklahoma, revenge against Texas A&M. What's going on, John? 
Well, it didn't take long, Brandon. The Taco Bell update, Oklahoma and AM. This is Jason White. You like him for the Heisman? Cross the middle here to Mark Clayton, who does most of the work, going 40 yards for the touchdown. And the Sooners out in front already, 7 0. Now, John, uh, in a league of their own, at least so far, and the Sooners continue to roll toward the Nokia Sugar Bowl on the night of January 4th in New Orleans. McGrath is the guard who has replaced Kerry. Third down again for Berlin. From the shotgun, snapped by Winslow, short of the first down, inside the 15-yard line that time. And that will set up a field goal opportunity as Robert Peace out of Ruston, Louisiana, makes the stop on the All-American tight end. One of the weaker points of this Miami team has been their red zone touchdown offense. You saw it, 39, this is the 40th trip inside the 20, only 17 touchdowns. This was an area where Miami used to score up towards 65%. Now they're settling for field goals. 31-yard attempt for John Petty. The holder is Matt Carter, number 11. Chris Harvey to snap it to him. Looks perfect. So Miami strikes first here with 5.57 remaining in the opening quarter. They lead Tennessee by a field goal. The Orange Bowl in the shadow of downtown Miami and our aerial coverage for the game courtesy of the Outback Steakhouse airship Bloomin' Onion One. The Outback Steakhouse specializes in college football and PGA golf coverage. Look for Bloomin' Onion at sporting events throughout 2003. Big crowd on hand here. McCain strike first. Mark Gent puts the ball on the tee again. And Corey Larkins who has returned one kickoff already, standing on the Volunteers' three-yard line. Martins over to his right. Looks for an alley. Gets past. And stepped out of bounds back into the neighborhood of the 20-yard line. Well, on Monday night, should be a good one. Donovan McNabb leading Philadelphia into Green Bay to take on Brett Favre and the Packers. Monday Night Football, 9 Eastern on ABC. The Packers, of course, so tough up at Lambeau Field and always questions about Donovan McNabb and what kind of a performance he's going to turn in from game to game, trying to get himself completely healthy. Gerald Riggs, the Ballyhood sophomore from Chattanooga, whose daddy was a tough running back, on the field for the first time. Riggs has had a little trouble concentrating on the plays at hand. He's got a little zip, though, as far as the running back is concerned, and he takes it out to the 23. And Thomas Carroll, the sophomore from New Jersey, makes the stop. And uh, Jack Casey Clausen is a, an impressive young man. And Brent, he loves to win on the road. Before the game, I chatted him up and I asked him, what about this torrid Miami heat and humidity? He said, I love it. Jack, have you ever been to Northridge, California in August? <laughs> yes, sir. Tennessee keeps Miami in the nickel package. Remember, they're missing a corner, so they drop down one corner. Lawson goes back in the shotgun on second down. Offensive line does a great job for him. Goes downfield near midfield. Double coverage on Jason Swain. Wide receiver and Gary, let's take a look at our cheap rushing playbook. Sometimes good defense against the run is just being fundamentally sound. Remember early in the game, Tennessee tries to get outside with a reverse. Watch DJ Williams do it just like the coaches tell you. It's great players doing great things and fundamentally sound. Turn that play back in and let your safeties and other linebackers clean it up. When you do it like the coach says, it works pretty well. Somewhat surprised that Randy Sanders, the offensive coordinator, and Clausen decided to take it deep. The offensive line of Tennessee has done a very admirable job here so far. Now there's somebody loose, and Clausen steps away. Diving for the first down. Casey Clausen across the 30-yard line, picks up the first down on the quarterback scramble for 10 yards. Well, remember in this game last year, he was sacked seven times by Miami. Well, you look down on our scene here at the uh, bottom of the hour. Miami coming off a loss at the hands of Virginia Tech, and not just any deep feet. They were embarrassed. Hard week of practice. They lead it. Tennessee struggled last week against Duke. Really didn't focus. 
And uh, Coach Fulmer said this week practices were much better. Up in Knoxville when we saw him on the field here yesterday. First down at 10 and now Clausen changing things up. He has four wide. He'll empty the backfield out. Troy Fleming goes out. Wants to throw the screen in that direction. Got a block on the corner. And out to the 39-yard line, Derek Tinsley, defended by John Vilma. You see a lot of Tennessee fans are, because of the slow start, are seeing the reaction by Tennessee in the last four games. 23 total points in the first half by the Tennessee offense. Randy Sanders right now says we want to get off a little faster. Let's go some wide receiver sets. That's the weakness for Miami. Wide spread out field. Let's go at them. Penalty flag. And uh, the referee's counting bodies. As soon as he threw the flag, Ritter began counting from left to right. Substitution infraction on the offense. They had 12 players on the field, five-yard penalty. He made second down. Uh, Brent, uh, Casey Clawson knew he had 12 men. He tried to take a timeout, but you can't. The penalty is called even if you try to signal a timeout. Fulmer not happy with that. Now he gets both a timeout and you get a timeout and a penalty on the play. So we'll take a break with Miami up by a field goal. and my nickname is the Iceman. Favorite actor is Jim Carrey. Um, he's a great comedian, makes me laugh. Favorite food is Mexican. My favorite sports team is the Oakland Raiders because they have a commitment to excellence. And uh, Casey's favorite sports team uh, in a bit of disarray <laughs> right now, I might add. And there's Casey's numbers as we start out on a uh, muggy afternoon, toweling off on the far side. So they burn a timeout. They still need about 10 yards here for a first down. But the one thing that stands out here so far is that the Tennessee offensive line, Munoz, Herrera, Wells, Douglas, and Young have done a good job. Kareem Brown able to break through once for pressure for Miami, but not the kind of heat that we normally see with a Miami D. Second down. it into the middle and Cedric Houston attacking the middle just short of the 40-yard line so this will be third down and short and coming up on the Capital One halftime show John Terry and Craig will have highlights and analysis plus a uh, quirky look at how you separate all the one loss BCS teams one thing I believe you have to do when you play against Miami is force their safeties to get in the box they don't want to do it they play their safeties very deep and if you run the ball at it, they don't like to move those guys up at all unless you prove you can run the ball. Clausen with a cluster on the right. Fires for the first down across the 45-yard line. Taylor defends Mark Jones, and that's Jones' second catch of the game. You can see the respect that Tennessee has for the pass rush of Miami. It has been a lot of timing, quick passing routes. Screens, drop off to the fullbacks, quick passes. They're not standing there all day holding the ball. I think this is where the experience of Casey Kloss and playing on the road in the SEC is coming through. This is no big deal. You play at Alabama, at Florida, you come in here. Yeah, great players over there, but the crowd is meaningless to Casey Kloss. McClover and D.J. Williams back on the field for the Canes. Play fake. Kloss is getting a hit on the blitz. Steps away from it. Beautifully arches it down the middle in complete. There is a penalty flag back on the 38-yard line. I think Munoz is going to get called for holding on right at there at the end rush. 
the pressure that time applied by Vilma, number 51. Well, he rode his hand up into the face mask. Yeah. Those big guys fighting inside, but what a play by Clawson that time to avoid Vilma on that play action pass. Just that little calm sidestep. Yeah, absolutely. There's Munoz right there. Out to the side. Let's see if he gets his hands up in the face mask on the play. One punch. Holds him off. Does he get him at the end? Yep, right there. He kind of holds him on the face mask. Right there, right a little bit. That's going to drop him back 15. But you're right. You don't have to be a strong scrambler at quarterback, but you must be able to maneuver inside that pocket. You saw what Casey Clawson did right there. Now Philip Fulmer and the volunteer coaches with their hands full here today. One linebacker on the field, just Vilma. They'll swing to try and get some of it back. But not much doing against that D as Kelly Jennings, the corner of. And you know, speaking of beating Miami, we asked Coach Fulmer how he thinks they can upset the Canes. We're going to pull out all stops. We're going to play and kind of be wide open as we get a chance to be uh, during the course of the game. But those three things have got to happen. Win the kicking game, uh, establish ourselves some offensively and, and take care of the football, and then defensively get some takeaways. Now he's looking at a nickel. Three is in. Second down. Only picked up one yard on that safety valve swing. Clausen looks a little bit downfield this time high and incomplete at the 47 yard line had an open man and a little bit high on Jones and uh, John what about the Sooners how are they doing lad Brent they just keep rolling Keywon Jones from six yards out takes a handoff weaves his way I mean did you see the line that's too easy to get in from six yards out 14 nothing now Oklahoma has a lead smacked one team around last week Oklahoma State that upset them last year Texas A&M was the other and it looks like payback so you know what today third down now for Clausen wants to set the screen in the middle does but this will be well short of the first down Thomas Carroll comes in Cedric Houston was the receiver and Colquitt as we go back to the previous play here. Let's go back to that drop by Mark Jones. We talk about big plays that not need to be made by Tennessee. That's one of those big plays that has to be made by this Tennessee wide receivers. That's a good throw from a quarterback over the zone, and you got to come down with those to beat Miami. Now Colquitt did not punt well his first time. You find us a great guy. Keller Winslow was coming after a piece of that one. The All-American tight end fielded on the 15-yard line by Taylor. And Taylor, one of the two deep men across the 25-yard line. Well, there's a warming way to the FBI and the mob. A line of fire, a groundbreaking new drama premieres Tuesday, December 2nd on ABC. And a viewer discretion is advised. First down and 10 for Brock Berlin and the Canes. They're up a field goal. The ball is at the 28-yard line. Peyton set in the eye. Play fake. Gonna go very deep now. Parrish knocked away by Greer, number 33, the corner. You have to trust the one-on-one -on -one throw if you're a quarterback. I think this is what Brock needs to get over the hump with. Play action passes. He knew it was one-on-one. -on -one. You've got Parrish, a big play receiver, going one-on-one -on -one and just waits too long to throw this ball. This ball should be on the way way before this and it just hangs way too long and all of a sudden you make a knockdown on a ball that was potentially big. A little bit quicker, a little bit earlier for those big plays deep. Second down and 10. Winslow with two catches on the day for 24 yards. Payton stopped at the 32-yard line where it'll be third down coming up. Burnett, Carson, California, making the hit for Tennessee. If you talk to the Tennessee coaches, they say the challenge in this football game is their front seven. 
The front four must stop the Miami running game. The linebackers must clean up. Tennessee has had four running backs in the last five games gain over 100 yards. When's the last time a Tennessee team has done that? Now, Kerry, who was shaken up, is back off the field at that left guard spot. And McGrath is in there on the third and five. Three-man defensive line, the second time Tennessee showed it. Before the snap. So the quarter comes to an end. There is a flag throw, which was somewhat confusing. They're now conferring. Now it looks like with the uh, the water the bottles and everything on the field. Prior to the snap, therefore we have no foul. No penalty on the play. We've come to the end of the first quarter at the Orange Bowl, and the Canes lead it, but only by a field goal. Well, you can see that last week, Miami plagued by one mistake after another, minus two in the turnovers, giving up 21 points off their four turnovers and being drubbed by Virginia Tech. Now, here's another third down. Miami with Winslow averaging 12 yards a catch. And Berlin back from the shotgun. And it's intercepted. Picked off by Simon the linebacker who drops back here, Gary. And Berlin threw inaccurately. Yep, and you can see it. He looked all the way left the whole time. He gives him a little slap on the helmet. He has a matchup to the left he wants to go to. Look at that. Glances one. Look at left. He's got right in front of him. Kellen Winslow wide open for the first down. Passes him up, goes outside, and takes the linebacker, Burnett, right to the interception. So Simon. I'm sorry, Kevin Simon, right to the interception. Great play by Kevin Simon. It's down and 10 now for Clausen and the Volunteers. So Berlin on the season, nine touchdowns and now 13 interceptions. So Tennessee with a short field to work with. A first down run, Jabari Davis. So here is another situation where a turnover has given a Miami opponent a chance here. Uh, how long do you think the leash is on Brock Berlin today before Coach Coker might at least think about Cruda? Well, it, the fans are going to have a lot to do with, and the batty language of his teammates is going to have a lot to do with that right now. Brock Berlin is fighting himself. He had a, his first receiver was wide open. He's trying to make things happen and not quick enough. He's not doing his reads quick enough. That's why he's making mistakes so far in this football game. There is Berlin, and there is the, the backup down there, number 18, Derek Crudup, who lost the starting job to him last spring. And, of course, the quarterback of the future down there, and they're redshirting him. So number 16, who has been signaling in plays, Kyle Wright from California, will not play in this game today, even though he's in uniform down there. First down and 10 after that strong run by Jabari Davis. to another first down number 34 Davis before Taylor is able to get over there and defend him and now here Gary you mentioned something that I think is very important about the volunteers they go to places like Gainesville yep. Tuscaloosa Baton Rouge they go into tough spots on the field closed end zones like where they're headed now you've got a senior quarterback calmly bringing the volunteers up to the line no reason for them to panic in the teeth of this huge Orange Bowl crowd here today and Miami second down and short after the nine yard run staying on the ground and giving up yards that time to Vilma number 51 the linebacker you know when you run the ball at Miami they're going to start stunning their linebackers they've done it forever there's no mystery when you play against Miami we talked to Casey Clausen yesterday I said you're going to be surprised by anything he goes no when you run the ball they move their safeties up eventually their linebackers like to crowd the line of scrimmage and you must have play action passes available to you to keep them from doing that Here's third down and it's short. Off 
said I. Clausen identifies where the safety's coming from. And he was coming right after it. Vilma steps up into that hole again. Now, will they go for a game time field goal? And coach doesn't even hesitate. Here comes the field goal unit. Well, I thought Jabari Davis should have hit that inside and harder. You had third and a yard, and he kind of like stuttered around there. Yes, Miami hit it. They ran that play right into a blitz, but he kind of tippy toed. James Wilhoyt. John Henderson is his holder. A 41 yarder, a bid to tie the game. On its way, strong, good looking kick. We're deadlocked in the Orange Bowl. Miami three, Tennessee three. Let's take a look at the Pontiac high performance drive summary. A field goal off the turnover on the interception. Five plays, 18 yards. So after an impressive start to that drive, the Miami defense slowed up the volunteers. And uh, back deep, Devin Hester. Uh, along with number eight, Darnell Jenkins. So two freshmen back deep. Youngsters from Riviera Beach and Miami. Palm Beach County and Dade County. Two counties that play awfully good high school football. On these parts. And a strong, strong kickoff. This one will come out on the 20-yard line. Well, our Aflac trivia question and let's focus on Miami so many great great NFL stars have come out of here but three of them have been inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame so all the Miami Hurricanes who have gone on to the NFL who are the three who've been inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame we'll have the answer a little bit later for you Brock Berlin and I detect a few boos yeah it's, it's, it, this is a pro town and if you play quarterback for the University of Miami you get a lot of benefits there's a lot of great players playing with you, but you need to produce. And Jason Gathers is now the tailback. His first carry of the game. Nothing much doing. So over the last few years, the Miami Hurricanes behind Ken Dorsey beat just about everyone in sight until they ran up against Ohio State the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl and lost the national championship game. Dorsey now with the San Francisco 49ers. One of the backup quarterbacks under Dennis Erickson out there. Erickson having won national championships here with the Miami team. And he likes what he sees of Dorsey so far. Very smart quarterback. Second down and 10 for Brock Berlin who transferred from Florida. Runs the draw play, and again, nothing doing with that Miami running game. Wilson makes the stop, and the boos start to come down. And uh, Jack, this offense is struggling right now. And Brent, it was interesting to watch the dynamics on the sidelines when Brock Berlin threw that pick. You glimpsed it a little bit with Derek Crenup talking to him and his position coach going through the sequence. But outside of that, no one, I repeat, no teammates came up and talked to Brock Berlin during that time that he was on the sidelines. A little strange, don't you think? Yeah, just crewed up, went right to him on the bench in that picture we had, Jack. You're right. That was the only one who went back there. Back in the shotgun now is Brock Berlin. Under pressure, drops off the screen on that side. Kevin Beard. And Beard explodes for the first down. That was a well-set-up play. And Berlin let the pressure come to him before he unloaded. Corner blitz that time. Jabari Greer came in and put the pressure, but nice call by Rob Chudzinski that time. You watch Miami throughout their history. They've always had that screen pass effectively keeping you from blitzing. Remember McKay, he had that long screen pass play from Ken Dorsey to win a game before, and Miami always has it in their arsenal. Cenerys Moss, Santana's brother, is off to the left side of this formation. Jenkins, the freshman, is on the right. And they come back with gathers. There's a penalty flag is thrown at the 34-yard line. The linesman throwing the flag. Against the Hurricanes. Well, Michigan State and Ohio State in a big one. And, John, what's going on? 
Brent both still in the hunt for the Big Ten Championship. And Jeff Smoker, he's been one of the great stories of the year. 22 yards to Ajim Shabai. Touchdown and Michigan State on top 7-0. The Buckeyes kick a field goal. 7-3 is where they stand now. Seven three in that game, and here we're tied at three all. So the ten yard penalty will make it first down and eighteen, according to the scoreboard here in the Orange Bowl. Ball has been spotted inside the twenty five on the twenty four yard line. Moss Jenkins out to the left, and Winslow now is split off his tight end spot off to the right for Berlin. And the running play with gathers going nowhere. Well, our Pacific Life game summary, and as you might expect from a 3-3 game so far, Gary, it's been all defense. It has been, and it's been a little bit of the quarterbacks making mistakes and helping the defense more by Brock Berlin, but then those linebackers, second and inches, they came in and stopped that drive after the turnover. So both teams have been riding the defense so far early in this football game. Now it's the center Rodriguez shaken up and so Kerry comes in from the sideline so along with everything else being shorthanded because of injuries and suspensions on the defensive side of the ball now it's the offensive line that has been nicked here second down and long they move Chris Myers number 77 into snap play fake Berlin Side pressure drops it off incomplete. Winslow, the intended target, and the heat was on that time from Ritzman. And they tried to go downfield that time, but the, the Tennessee defense just squatted on the play. There was no one to throw to, and Brock Berlin felt that pressure and just dumped it off to the closest possible guy to get an incompletion. You can see that without the speed at running back for Miami. This Tennessee defense feels good about crowding the line of scrimmage. Until Brock Berlin shows he can throw the ball downfield, they're going to crowd it. They have no fear of the speed in the backfield for Miami. Third and 16. They need to reach the 43-yard line for a first down. Berlin hit on the release and almost intercepted. But Miami is forced to punt. And there was pressure that time by Harrelson, the sophomore defensive end, number 98. Well, Carlos Joseph, number 76, the offensive tackle on the right side, had him, got pushed, you could see it. He said, I got grabbed by the face mask and my helmet ripped right off. He turned around to the referee and said, hey, come on, you saw us hold. Watch those guys' hands. That's the only reason he beat me, he grabbed my helmet. Brian Monroe's first punt of the game. Fielded on the run. 45, at the 46, Mark Jones goes down hard in the arms of sophomore linebacker Roger McIntosh, number 50, and there is a penalty flag on this play. That was some special teams hit by McIntosh. You talk to the Miami people, they say McIntosh is going to be the next special linebacker here, and you saw a little peak of it right there. So the umpire and the referee conferring over there. And that's against Tennessee is the preliminary signal. So they'll march this one back 10 more yards. And that cost Klausen and the volunteers some valuable field position. The penalty will go from the point, the spot of the catch. There you go, 10 yards. Well, the kick there. was in the air. We had holding on the receiving team, 10 yards from the spot where the kick ended, first down. Didn't hold the right man. Should have held McIntosh. Coach Fulmer not happy with that mistake. The ball's brought all the way back to the 26. Watch this. He broke him down, huh? Textbook tackle, Time out. Tennessee has watched film and said, you know what, when you're patient against Miami, they get impatient. When you talk to Miami's Randy Shannon, defensive coordinator, he says, we can't get impatient if they're patient. Rick's back on the field now as the running back, Clawson, finds the open man, James Banks, the one-time quarterback, and who knows, when Clawson graduated, uh, Banks could be the quarterback last year. Well, earlier, we asked you the AFLAC trivia question, who are the three former Hurricane Stars who are members of the Pro Football Hall of Fame? 
Let's take a look at the three who have played in a combined nine Super Bowls. There they are. Jimmy Kelly, Ted Hendricks, Jim Otto, all in the NFL Hall of Fame. And all three were just great, great football players here at Miami and then later on in the National Football League. They show him around and instead of run the youngster right straight ahead for a first down to the 40-yard line. There's Gerald Riggs, whose daddy was pretty good in the NFL. Sooners still rolling, John, are they? Brent Rowling is putting it mildly. Take a look at this. Jason White drops back to pass, throws it towards the end zone, and Mark Clayton just has to run underneath it for the touchdown. Now 21 to nothing. Jason White, from our standpoint, Mark Clayton may be the most underrated big player wide receiver in the country. Tennessee comes back with the running play, and D.J. Williams steps in and stops it. And uh, speaking of college football, as remind you, next week now we'll go back to the 3.30 Eastern time. Gary and I will be in Lincoln, Nebraska for Kansas State, Nebraska. You down here in Florida will see North Carolina State, Florida State. And, of course, we'll have a Big Ten game and a Pac-10 game, depending on what happens here this afternoon in those two conferences. So you might want to call ESPN if uh, you don't get the game in your area, order it up on your cable system or with the satellite dish. Second down and 11 for Clausen, sticking right with Riggs. Could not get to the corner that time because of Vilma, number 51, and Greg three, number five, there with him. So Vilma has been a big time defensive player for the Canes here so far. Good defensive call by Miami. They slant down and bounce it out that time. Linebackers are scraping at the ball at the line of scrimmage. It's a run stunt. Pata, number 95, slants down and bounces it to the middle linebacker. Good call by Randy Shannon. Casey Clausen, though, has not yet been sacked by this Miami D. Third down. 11 yards to go for the first down. Backside pressure and a foot race, and down he goes for the first time. At the 34-yard line, Brian Pata, who was forced to play today because of the San Antonio Thomas and Orion Harris injury. Pata's up to the top of the screen on this one, comes to the outside, beats Sean Young, number 66, but you can see Clawson has no one to throw to on the play, and he stays very conservative with a good punter. You should stay conservative. Keep this game 3-3. Don't make a mistake when at that situation. Interesting here. Only Parrish back deep on this punt as they move Taylor up into a blocking position. Taylor trying to get through, picked up, and Colquitt goes down. There's a penalty flag. This will be roughing on Colquitt. The tip-off was when Taylor came up to the line in that linebacking position, and they left Parrish alone. But more importantly, Dustin Colquitt, the best punter in the nation, is down. That's why you have to throw the flag when those punters are hit. You've got to protect him. And what a huge, huge loss. This would be for Tennessee. Jack Root down on the sidelines has just relayed word right ankle is what he appears to have injured. Let's take another look at this now. Left-footed kicker, it's the plant leg. And I think Leon Williams, number 44, is the guy who got him on the plant leg that time. This is gonna almost be a first down. This is a 15-yarder. It's gonna be right at the mark and probably a first down. Colquitt's daddy, Craig, of course, punted for Tennessee and in the NFL. His uncle, Jimmy, was also a punter. So you talk about a punting family, and Pops comes to a lot of practices. He's probably here watching Dustin Colquitt, who in high school was a soccer star for four years. And the 15-yard penalty makes it a first down. At the first, at, that's just like a turnover for, my, for Miami getting the ball back and giving field position to Tennessee. They would have gotten the ball at the 25, 30 yard line and now they're back on the field. One area that Tennessee has not been efficient in so far is on third down. They're only two of six overall. Near midfield, after the penalty. Clausen and the ball. Williams trying to get there and he's sacked again. Brought down on the 42 by McClubber, number 49, led the assault that time, and now the front's starting to pick the pace up for the Hurricanes. Corey Larkins, number 23 that time, was supposed to go deep. He's at the bottom of your screen, 
Casey Clawson thought he was going to go deep. He stops at a five-yard hitch. Clawson turns to throw the ball deep. He's got no one out there. That's a sack by McLaughlin. So two sacks almost back-to-back. -back. The punt play was in between them. Second down and a bunch now for Clawson. Cedric Houston back in, and he'll take the inside handoff from the shotgun. Strong run to the 48. Almost the original line of scrimmage. Tomorrow at 8, 7 Central on new 10-8 for this rookie and his training officer. Every day is training day, 10-8. Officers on duty, part of Sunday's best. ABC tomorrow at 8, 7 Central. So here's that third down play. And again, let's repeat, only two of six on third downs for Clausen and the volunteers here. Those Miami DBs. So tough to shake free of historically. That has been true one year after another. And Clausen needs time to get somebody 12 yards downfield. Steps away from it, throws in underneath. Reaches for the first down, James Banks does. And it's going to be right at the marker. He's the leading receiver. As Brent told you, he was the quarterback coming into the year third string. Put him over there. They needed playmakers. That's why they moved Mark Jones from defense to offense. They also bring in Banks, and you get those guys out there and make plays. So the young man listed at the moment as a fourth-string quarterback. He started one game as the QB last year, and with uh, Klaus and C.J. Leak moving on, Whoa. that was a first down, and simply put, James Banks extended for it. And uh, Jack, what do you hear about Colquitt on the sideline? Well, Brent, let me take you quickly through it. Dustin Colquitt came off, refused all medical attention, shook everybody off, shook it off himself, and then ran up to Philip Fulmer and said, Coach, I'm ready again if you need me. Yeah, part of the act, he had to limp off to make sure it looked good. First down and 10 for the Volunteers. Jabari Davis back in as the tailback. Davis tries to stretch and nothing doing against number 36, Maurice Sykes, the senior from Miami. Can't say enough about that front seven bouncing it outside for those safeties and linebackers to make those plays. Coming up on the Capital One Halftime Show, John Terry Craig will have highlights and analysis, plus a quickie look at how you separate all the one-loss PCS teams. And in case you have not heard, yesterday the SEC announced that instead of having a vote amongst athletic directors who are not involved, they will let the BCS standings determine who might win the SEC East following all the competition in and out of the conference now because that really brings non-conference games into it. Boston has good time, fires dropped again. Had one dropped at the 30-yard line by Banks, which would have been a first down and a penalty flag thrown back in the neighborhood of the quarterback of the offensive line back there. Miami, of course, slipping from that second position in the BCF standings. That's against Miami. Automatic first down. Let's take a look at the BCF standings presented by Allstate. There now, let's talk about the SEC. Georgia is number 10. So at the moment, they are the leader. But pay attention to where the others are, Tennessee and Florida. Let's say we decided today, Florida would be dropped. It would come to Tennessee and Georgia. Georgia, a winner, would put them into the SEC championship game. So here today, Florida trying to jump past Tennessee, rooting for Miami, needs to get within five positions of Georgia. Then it would be their game, which was run last week by the Gators. So first down and 10 now for Casey Clawson and the Volunteers. Costly penalties, another penalty flag comes flying. Davis is the running back. Well, Will Fork again beats the snap. I think Miami's going to get called for another one here. They've met the enemy so far. Miami has, and it's been them. That's their sixth penalty, is it, of the day? I know that uh, we've had two costly ones here, which have resulted in Tennessee first downs, uh, roughing the punter and... Of course, the uh, personal foul, and they've been penalized now six times for 56 yards. It's kept the drive along. Look, they got fourth and 15, or 14 and a half, and they pick it up on the roughing the punter. And then third and long, Banks stretches out and picks up the first down. Now they get a first and five. Plenty of time, 327. A couple of timeouts left, so 
nothing an issue as far as the clock is concerned. And Rebel is the fullback with Houston. Back in at tailback. We've seen it. three tailbacks. And he's blitzing. And Houston as a whole. For a first down inside the 15-yard line, Taylor, number 26, the All-American safety up for the shot. Well, here's today's singular wireless. Both are good ones. In your opinion, and I'm kind of interested in this, who do you think is the college coach of the year? So log on to ESPN.com, search singular, make your vote, or singular users text message to 222, and we'll update you with the results in the second half. And certainly uh, make a case for Interesting to see Ron Zook suddenly on the list. Three tough road game wins by the Gators and uh, his freshman quarterback coming to life up there. Chris Leak now, first down and 10, ball inside the 15. The stretch play, Daylight. Still going, Houston's inside the five-yard line. Fine-looking run by the junior tailback. Cedric so Houston is one of the two running backs that have rushed for over 100 yards. He's healthy now, and you can see where he is. Munoz right here. See if he doesn't get a grab at the end of that play. He's got his hands outside. He gets a little bit of grab on Thomas Carroll, and that allows Houston to break a tackle. You talk to the Tennessee people, they say, our running backs are not breaking tackles. Well, so far, Cedric Houston is breaking tackles. He's looking like the Tennessee tailbacks of old. He's rushed for 31 yards. He's replaced now by Davis inside the five-yard line. Tight running formation for the Volunteers. Here comes Davis into the middle, still going. Short of that goal line. Haddo was in there defensively. So now Davis has rushed for 25 yards, Riggs for 10. On the day, Tennessee has outrushed Miami 70 to 19. Now, that number is important because when you look at Miami's problems, they have struggled to the running back position after losing Frank Gore. And now they'll come up with a second down and goal. It's a good play action pass down for Tennessee here. 13th play coming in this drive. Davis pounds short of the goal line, and it is third and goal. See, Miami's defense is like a professional defense. They attack the line of scrimmage. One and two yards near the goal line with all those linebackers and safety way up there as you look at the time of possession. So important in a hot day like this is one stat that Phil Fulmer wanted in his favor. Time of possession, he's got it. But it is very difficult to run the ball down there with the safeties and the linebackers all within two yards of the line of scrimmage. They leave Davis in the game. Play fake, Clausen rolling right. Going for the end zone. And it's fourth and goal. McClubber up with another play. And along with Pata, the freshman, and McClover doing a job down there. But number 49 was all over, and he comes off the field now. He may have injured an hand or an arm or something. He's coming over for a little treatment. And that puts McIntosh in the game. The guy who made the play on the special teams play. Now do you go for a field goal here and get the lead? Fourth and two down there. And so far, on these short yardage plays, they have not picked up an inch. And they're going to talk about it and see Fulmer wants to see about this situation if you go and leave Miami down there their offense has not been that impressive no running well, game there's only you 26, leave them buried back 26 there. seconds to go they're just going to take a knee Tennessee and Philip Fulmer deciding to try to make a statement but should they miss on this fourth down they're going to give the Canes a big lift Going into the locker room at the intermission. Davis is the running back. Fourth and goal. Clausen's got the end around. Got the corner. Touchdown, Derek Tinsley. Miami not looking for the end around inside the five yard line. There's also a Kane player injured on the field. And that is Vince Wilfork, their All American defensive lineman. So the 350 pounder has been out there most of this game. He has been a force. 
And he is absolutely down with exhaustion and perhaps a more serious injury than that with 20 seconds to go. Take a look at this play. It was beautifully executed. Well, Fulmer said we're going to leave it all out in the field, and this was a gamble. I thought he'd take three points. Tinsley gets the ball, and there's short reverse from the, from the close wing position that time. And Tennessee gambling with, what, 20 seconds to go in the half, puts a touchdown up to make it potentially a 10-3 game. Now it will be Tennessee sky high going into the locker room unless they mess up the kickoff here with James Wilhoyt on to attempt the extra point. Tennessee a double digit underdog in this game. Hard to believe the Volunteers were 12 point underdog and now they lead it 10-3. And Miami looking to regroup. Welcome back to the BCS Spotlight game between Tennessee and Miami presented by ADT. And these great views today from Miami being provided by the Outback Steakhouse Airship, the Bloomin' Onion 1. Captain Mitch Johnson at the controls of the Bloomin' Onion. High above the Orange Bowl down at Joe's last night. A Bloomin' Onion's about the only thing they didn't have over there. And if you like stone crabs, you've got to make a migration to South Florida. It doesn't get any better than that. And we thank our uh, executive producer, Mike Pearl, for picking up the check last night, too, Gary. It's always it was, nice. Uh, it slid his way real quickly, <laughs> didn't yes, it, it, when did. I saw it? <laughs> Here's the kickoff now. Coming out from the end zone is Hester. Got it, 35 to the 40 with 14 seconds left. 14 seconds, but I've really been impressed with Casey Kloss and he has been in control of his football team the whole way. Checking off plays for runs, quick passes. He's been into his game plan and very calm. His experience, Brent, I think is really paying off in this game. Yeah, he's been very calm, Gary. Yep. I would absolutely agree with that. Not rattled at all. And he'll certainly get a look by one of the NFL teams following uh, this season. Tennessee and uh, spread the field now. The Canes have got 13 seconds to work with here. Lynn from back in the shotgun. Fires in underneath for about 10 yards. Roscoe Parrish, the receiver that time. So the Canes are at midfield with six seconds to go. Brock Berlin called the timeout on the play. They did not get the first down. We talked about this being a pressure-packed football game. Well, Brock Berlin is facing a different kind of pressure. It's pressure from a defense that it decided to make him the focal point of the game plan. Blitzes from linebackers, defensive backs, and defensive linemen have put him the center of the defensive game plan. I know that some folks have been disappointed in Tennessee, but when you play in the SEC, when you play at the level that Tennessee does, and they've lost so many outstanding defensive linemen to the NFL, there had to be a little bit of a drop-off. But even at that, Philip Fulmer figured to come in here and really give a good effort today against Miami. Cards were loaded in his favor. They did not play well last week against Duke. Now the BCS ingredient has been added to determining the SEC East. I mean, you're looking at a team that could make it all the way to a BCS Bowl. They've got to go unbeaten the rest of the way. That would put them in a tie. And uh, Casey Klassen over there on the sideline, the veteran quarterback. I think the only strategy here for Brent, uh, Brent for Miami is to throw the ball into the end zone and try to get a jump ball touchdown. I don't see how they can throw the ball. And if they throw the ball 18 to 20 yards downfield, it's still a long field goal into the wind. And I just don't know what other thing I'd do but throw the ball deep. And that looks the way they're lined up is to throw the ball deep. More. Those three beard. bunch guys. They're both over there on that side with Parrish. That's the bunch. Boy, Tennessee has not adjusted to it. Now the safety drops way back in center field. Berlin steps up, fires the other way toward Winslow. Almost had it in the end zone. Kellen Winslow Jr. battling Jason Allen. And for a moment, I thought the All-American was going to come down with a football. Take a look at this replay. This is so close. Okay, watch it. Kellen puts his hand on his shoulder and then has it in his hand. But Jason Allen does a nice job of popping that ball loose. Let's go down to Jack with Coach Fulmer. Well, Coach, you said you were going to let it all hang out. Tell me about the decision process on that fourth and goal. That wasn't really much decision. You come to some place 
like this, you need touchdowns. We've already been down there once and had to settle for a field goal. I'm trying to send our team a message. We're here to win this football game. Thanks, Coach. Man can flat out coach. That's a ball coach right there. And you critics should be ashamed of yourself. very un Miami like performance here in the first half only one 20 yard play and a field goal as we take a look at the Pacific Life game summary first half statistics and Miami hurt itself badly on Tennessee's touchdown drive with two 15 yard penalties that helped set it up and Gary what do you find that's out of whack here well I think time of possession if you look at this Miami has won every game time of possession but one they lost it by 15 seconds and the reason they need to keep the ball. Well, Miami, remember, deferring after winning the opening toss, so they'll handle the ball here to start the second half. Hester and Jenkins are back deep for the Wilhoyt kickoff with Tennessee up by a touchdown. And in the round on fourth and two, the difference in our game. And a knee, it'll come out on the 20-yard uh, line. And uh, so, what, Gary, what's your feeling here now about I, the state of this Miami team? Uh, Brent, I think they need to start running the football. 19 yards rushing at halftime. They need to take some pressure off Brock Berlin. And when they do throw, they want to throw the ball downfield. But to do that, the running backs, the tight ends, and the offensive line have to block a little bit better. It's been a catastrophe on offense for Miami. And, of course, Kellen Winslow coming very close. And, uh, Jack, what did Coker have to say down there? Well, Brent, I'll tell you right after this play because, I mean, this is the key. This is the one thing that Larry Coker has challenged his team this first play. I'll explain more. Berlin handing off, and there's the running game with Peyton out to the 24. Back we go. And that's one of the things that Larry Coker talked about, Brent, as Gary alluded to. He wanted to talk not about problems with his quarterback, but about protection, not only in rushing, but also in passing. The other thing he explained to me is he said, look, we are out of rhythm. We are out of sync, Jack. He said, we've got to find a way to get back in rhythm. Brent, we'll just have to wait and see if they find it. Yeah, for sure. Second down and seven for Coker and the uh, Canes. The last time Larry Coker experienced back-to-back -back losses as a head coach came when he was still coaching high school in Oklahoma. That's a long time ago. Complete. Ryan Moore, the freshman, to the 43 yard line, and a Miami first down there, a 19 yard play, just short of a 20 yarder. You're going to see people clear this way, and the receiver come underneath it right there on the hash mark. Now, this is the protection you need. Watch. Brock Berlin gets time to step into a throw, deliver a two yard pass for a big play. That's what we're talking about. Run the ball effectively on first down get into those lanes. I think the fullback right now, Kyle Kobe, number 40, has to come up, step go, up, go. and block at the point of attack right there. That guy's got to do something. Set in front now, Peyton, and the uh, defensive line for Tennessee jumped, but uh, there's no flag down there for the offside. Well, that's surprising. They've been calling those hair trigger offsides by the defense all game. Tennessee jumps and nothing happens. Second down, and long for Berlin, who has the signal from the sideline. Kevin Beard replaces the fullback. They'll give him an extra wide receiver. Mark Jones plays offense on defense, on the field for the Volunteers defensively. Facing this, what appears to be a passing situation for the Canes with three wide. Winslow escape from the right side they throw it underneath to Parrish and he crosses midfield close to another first down so they used Winslow to clear the area that time then brought Roscoe Parrish through the defense underneath well you saw a little bit right there it looked like Miami was going to go no huddle but because it's short yardage they didn't Kellen Winslow when he goes deep he takes one sometimes two guys with him you bring that trailing player underneath and you pick up very positive yards you can see the bracket on Winslow as there were three white jerseys had dropped back in that zone for Tennessee and that left it wide open for Roscoe Parrish the sophomore from Miami 
So even though they don't throw to Winslow, he's a factor. He's on the left wing, blocking for Peyton. It breaks free. 25, 20. Peyton is down at the nine-yard line. Jabari Greer, the longest offensive play of the day for the Canes. Jared Payton, son of the legendary Walter, 40 yards. Here's Kellen Windsor right here. It's an unbalanced line to the left on this play. And then they pull Chip Myers, number 77, to put another guy to that side. Myers comes in and gets the key block right there. And Payton comes right inside. A wonderful call that time by Rob Chedzinski. Quick snap, unbalanced line pull the backside guard to really unbalance it even more and pop a big play. Same formation again here. First and goal. Same play. And here comes Peyton into that hole, but this time it's filled by Robert Peace, the linebacker. Boy, I, you wonder now if Willis McGahee or Frank Gore doesn't read a play like that and pop it right into the end zone. If he would have followed his pulling guard, Chip Chris Myers, number 77, there was an angle to pop that thing inside. Watch number 77. Now follow the big guy. Just pop it outside right there. You just stay on that guard's hip, and you walk into the end zone. That's a little bit inexperienced by young Jared Payton. Not a lot of carries at tailback. Go back at the tailback spot on second down and goal. Play fake. Berlin. Nothing doing. A fullback. Struggles and down right about the five-yard line. Kyle Cobia, Jason Allen made the brilliant play on Kellen Winslow at the end of the first half. Makes the tackle on Cobia. Good play by Corey Campbell that time, the freshman defensive back in for Rashad Baker. He had Kellen Winslow on the play-action pass, and he stuck with his key, forced the quarterback, Rock Berlin, to drop it off to the fullback. You get a freshman. Reading his keys like that and forcing the short throw, that's good defense. Keller Winslow is on a right wing on this third end goal. They start him in motion through the formation over on the left side now to adjust the D. Berlin looks, covers, throws it away. And it is fourth down from the five-yard line, and Coker, with the decision, does not hesitate. He sends the field goal unit onto the team. Watch the bracket on Kellen Winslow. You don't think this is a red circle guy right here? When he gets out and he hooks, he gets bracketed. Boom, two guys right there. Can you throw the ball to the big guy? No, you can't. So it'll be John Petty with Matt Carter holding. This would be a 22-yarder. An impressive drive to open the second half. Tennessee will breathe a sigh of relief as Miami settles for a field goal. And Jarrett's 40-yard run on that one carry, the longest offensive play of the game, results in all but seven yards rushing. And uh, Derek Crudup, the backup again over there with uh, with Brock Berlin and the Miami coaches going over what they might do. This is only the third time that Miami has trailed at the half this year. Against the Florida Gators early, they rallied in one. Against Virginia Tech last week, they lost. Now we should see what happens here against Tennessee as Mark Gent kicks it off now to the volunteers and this one goes out of bounds and the penalty flag will come flying and Tennessee will take over here for the first time in the second half and uh, Gary you made an interesting point here about Peyton. Yeah a little bit of lack of experience watch if he follows his guard through the hole right here you learn when to get the big plays here you should recognize this thing right away the leverage here with Myers, he just pops that thing into the end zone, and that's a touchdown. Lack of experience, lack of confidence, he runs right into the linebacker. Instead of staying on that hip of the running of, the, of your guard, you turn a touchdown into a field goal. That was one of those plays that Jared Payton just doesn't have the experience to make yet at this point in his career. The Hurricane Corners come up to press on first down and 10. Lawson identifies, keeps an eye on the safety. Throws to the right, buys time, and throws at the first down mark. Taylor came up and tried to 
jar the ball loose from big Victor McClure. You do not see Victor McClure <laughs> catch a pass very often. That's exactly That's right. his first of the season, as a matter of fact. The big fellow blocker, and he's you gotta throw me the ball. He said, you gotta let me have the ball again. That was kind of fun. And in fact, the, uh, the, the alert for Miami is when McClure is in the game, they do not throw the ball. So can you imagine a double breaker there? They throw it, and they throw it to McClure. For a first down, everybody. <laughs> Ball at the 46-yard uh, line. Plays adjusted up at the line. And now they toss with Houston. And he is swarmed at the line of scrimmage. So again, uh, let's remind everybody about next week down 3.30 Eastern. Most of you down here in Florida, of course, are going to watch Philip Rivers and State against Bobby Bowden in Florida State. They're still in the race. Kansas State and Nebraska battling for the Big 12 North title. We'll also have a Big 10 game. And... Uh, the way Ohio State's rolling, we'll probably stick right with them when Purdue goes in there. But Ohio State with the lead on Michigan State. Second down now, and 10 yards to go for Clawson at Tennessee, leading Miami by four points, 10-6. Only one touchdown in this game so far. To the middle. First down, and Cedric Houston back from an injury explodes for 10 yards as you look down on the orange bowl here at the top of the hour with underdog Tennessee leading as a result of this fourth and two in the round for the game's only touchdown but then at the end of the half watch Keller Winslow going back and the ball is deflected away by Jason Allen, the sophomore from Muscle Shoals, Alabama. Cedric Houston's, Houston's having a wonderful game for Tennessee. He is break, breaking tackles and popping the line of scrimmage. Coming right back with him, and nothing doing that time as the, uh, the middle is clogged by Vilma. Remember last year, the, uh, the whitewash basically by Miami in, tel in uh, Tennessee. Houston, on the second play of the game, broke a long one for 74 yards down to the two-yard line, had to settle for a field goal, and then were held scoreless for the next two, 58 minutes of that football game. Tennessee, much smarter in this game plan. More misdirection, more keeping that Miami defense off balance with play-action passes. And Clemson was injured in that game and yep. didn't even play in the second half. Davis, now the running back. Clemson time, and he misfired. He had a man wide open at the 40-yard line. He just simply missed him. Let's check in with Jeff. Well, Brent, you look at how calm and cool Casey Clawson is. Here's why. They call him the Iceman. Over to your right, that's Val Kilmer from Top Gun. Boy, they do look an awful lot alike, don't they? Yeah, they do. Third down and 11 for Val Kilmer. I mean Casey Clawson. <laughs> One of, the Brent, uh, one of those read routes on that mass pa pass play, Clawson was upset with his receiver. He threw it one spot, receiver kept going. Four wide outs, including C.J. Faden. Going to try to throw for it. The offensive line needs to give Clawson time. Going to swing it. Can he get there? First down for Tennessee, and still going is number 27, fullback Troy Fleming, but hang on. We do have a flag, but it is thrown downfield. It's thrown downfield. I don't know if that was a face mask over there in that vicinity. Uh, there was some wrestling going on on that far side, away from the line of scrimmage. And uh, Tennessee moving its huddle toward that direction, indicating it's against Miami, which it is, and that is a face mask. Well, Miami dropped in a deep zone, and Casey Clawson did exactly what he told me he wanted to do in this football game. Face if it's covered practice. downfield, the watch Into this middle, job on the sock yards, by the big down. safety, Sean Taylor. Just wall off the inside player. If it's not open, if it's not open, go somewhere else with the ball. Drop it off to a back and live the fight another day. This time, dropping it off to his back, he gets a first down. That is discipline from your quarterback. And that is the seventh penalty against Miami. Incidental for five yards. So 61 total yards of penalties against the Canes. Tennessee at that red zone knocking on the door and of course up in Knoxville country they call this the orange zone and uh, yeah I'm covered right here to the outside the slot receiver 
Lawson, short drops, Kyers slant, deflected, tap, ball, incomplete. <laughs> so Miami plays volleyball, <laughs> being a will folk, and back there, looking for a grab, could not come up with the ball. I thought Jonathan Vilma could have had that ball. He was right there, he stuck up one hand, tried audible to the slant pass outside, ball's thrown a little bit high, just gets one hand. Come on, you gotta get two hands, and Vilma, Kind of <laughs> sees the ball, but reacts late. There's a big 300-pounder diving for it. I thought they should have thrown the outside receiver screen to the bottom of the field. Second down now for Tennessee. Blitz look, and Casey Clawson is checking. You see the safety sneaking up. The run play against it. Not much doing. Alfonso Marshall, and another penalty flag. This one is thrown in the backfield, and this is holding against Tennessee. But that Jonathan Vilma is so quick on his run stunts. Very hard to center him up on a block. You end up holding him all the time. Brent Musburger here with Gary Danielson and Jack Aroot. Miami and Tennessee, the Hurricanes, favored by a dozen, trail at 10-6. Miami held the two field goals, Tennessee's lone touchdown on fourth and two. Now it is second down and 20 after the penalty for Tennessee. They're just inside the Canes' 30-yard line, and Casey Clausen, the Tennessee quarterback, back in the shotgun, Drops it off to the outside. And one out of bounds is Derek Tinsley. Well, that's a nice freeze by Tinsley. That time, Casey Clawson recognized what I thought he should have done before in that situation. An uncovered receiver in the slot. Drop off that little bubble screen and force Miami to move up on those slot receivers. You get a little short pass and now get in position where at least you can kick a, a normal field goal. Tinsley really throws Vilma on that play. a situation where Miami likes to bring pressure on the quarterback. Let's see if they come. Third down and 13, and Clausen goes back in the shotgun. Three wides to his here, right. Here they come. Identified by Clausen. Throws the fade over the top. Incomplete for James Banks. And the defender again, Marshall, had one-on-one -on -one down the near sideline. Clawson knew exactly what was happening. There's the safety, Sean Taylor, coming to see the blitz. He's got one-on-one -on -one coverage to the bottom of the screen, but Casey kind of throws the ball too far out of bounds. Receiver gets pushed wide. The ball's almost impossible to catch. Good coverage on the play. So here is Will Hoyt on the field now to attempt the 39-yard field goal. Henderson is the holder. So Miami holds off the Tennessee challenge. Hurricane football trailing by four. So the second possession of the second half for Miami, they drove to a field goal with their first one. Six and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. 10-6, the Volunteers. And they did it with that first drive with great balance. They ran the ball four times and they passed the ball four times. And that's what they need to continue to do to keep Tennessee off balance. Winslow's off the line of scrimmage to the right. They run the toss play in that direction. Devin Hester, the wide receiver, is moved back at that uh, running back spot. And Keller Winslow got two blocks on that play. And we have an injured Tennessee player. That's one of the blocks. Down on the field, and that's Campbell, the freshman safety, Watch. who has replaced Baker. Watch it. He comes in, and he gets Campbell, puts his helmet right in there, and then gets the other guy with his shoulder pad. What a play by Kellen Winslow. His father, Kellen Sr., is here watching. In fact, we got a couple of Hall of Fame daddies here. Michael Munoz, father, also watching. It's uh, young Campbell. 
beat oh. 10 to 2 and at the end of the game take a look here there you are the sons of NFL Hall of Famers we have three of course the late great Walter Payton Jared his son with that 40 yard run Kellen Winslow Jr. with that fabulous block and uh, Michael Munoz the son of Anthony one of the great tackles out of USC and the Cincinnati Bengals Jared Payton with his father's familiar number Kellen Winslow of course number 81 his father had one of the greatest games ever turned in by a tight end in NFL history on the receiving end of Dan Fouts in that legendary overtime game against the Miami Dolphins when the Dolphins were playing their home games here in the Orange Bowl and Campbell appears to be all right so yeah, he, he will leave for a play on that far sideline now helmet right in the sternum right Antoine there Stewart, the another freshman has replaced him and it is second down Now Berlin's turn. You can see adjusting with actually no line over down that time. And they put the ball in Harrison's hands. Somewhat unusual defensive front just short of the first down. At the end of the game, we'll select the Chevrolet player of the game from each team. And Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. The last five years, the only team in college football to have a 2,000 rush year and a 2,000 pass year in the same season has been Miami. That great balance, being able to run the ball for 2,000 and pass the ball for 2,000 has made them what they were, very difficult to defense. You can see they're coming back to balance. That's why they needed to run the ball. They're down and two. Ball at the 30-yard line for the Canes. Berlin to throw for it to Winslow and it may have been short that appears to be short of that first down marker there putting the ball on Winslow's hands yeah he, he ran that a little bit shorter a lot of times you don't want to get on a receiver because it's part of a package but that, that is a first down it did get it that current play was run right at the line when you talk about throwing the ball to Kellen Winslow a couple things pop out at you first of all the guy's a big target he makes the ball look like a little baseball coming at him very physical you saw it in his blocking and even after he catches it and he runs sharp tight turns no rounding off anything for this guy really precise pass routes they move him to the right to the left side of the formation and then put him down off the play fake on the hit and it's good for 12 yards and another miami first down Quatrain Hill out of Sunrise, Florida, his first catch of the day for the sophomore. Best play of the game so far by Bach Berlin. Watch him buy time. He wants to get the fullback into the flat. Quatrain Hill, the best receiver. Good block by Jared Payton, but watch. He buys time, buys time, looks downfield, and then comes and drops it off to the fullback with a perfect throw. Nice job by Berlin. The ball is on the 46-yard line. Winslow is out, having been replaced on this play by Kevin Everett the junior who transferred to Miami and they come back with Peyton and this will be second down and long for the Hurricanes and there is a late penalty flag thrown by the back judge he came up and saw something from the rear and fired the penalty flag and now the, uh, the field judge is over there also remember this is an SEC crew it's against Miami after the play a big penalty coming against the Hurricanes and penalties have really killed their effort here yeah. today that is seven penalties for 61 yards unnecessary roughness it was on, on the offense it was on Moss way late way on the other side of the field play that was unnecessary and three of those penalties have been major 15 yarders that have really changed the field position of this football game so the ball is back on the Canes 30 yard line second down Tennessee leading by four as far as the PCS is concerned both these teams feel they need the win Miami City the fourth of course will virtually be eliminated from Sugar Bowl contention with a second defeat and Allen again defending and Roscoe Parrish the receiver for the Hurricanes that time and now it will be third down and a bunch that was a great play by Jason Allen Tennessee fans remember his 
knockdown of a pass in the fifth overtime against Bama to seal off that victory. But that time he just had a knockdown of Roscoe Parrish because he just caught his back leg on that slant pass. Of course, he made a great, great play at the end of the half here, knocking the ball away from Kellen Winslow Jr. in the end zone. Third down for Berlin. Firing Winslow middle, first down across the 45. It's going to be spotted at about the 43, and that's enough for the first down for Miami. He finds the All-American on third and 20. Tennessee runs a zone blitz. Watch the nose tackle he dropped, and Kellen Winslow reads it and just goes right in the middle of the zone. A zone blitz, you drop a nose tackle. Winslow just finds the soft spot. No defensive tackle can cover Kevin Winslow, and you gamble with the zone blitz. If it's picked up like it was by Miami, you pay. Hester is off to the right. The running back is Gathers. Winslow on the move. Off his hands incomplete, and it'll be second down and 10. Let's check in with Jack Aroot. Well, Brent, how many times do coaches get first to Jeremy Shockey and then a Kellen Winslow? At tight end, that's exactly what Miami has had. I asked the coaches, what were the differences between the two? They said, well, it's real close, but Jeremy may have had a more ferocious hitter and maybe a little bit more physical. But they say Kellen is smooth. They say he has good hands. But the thing that they said about Kellen Winslow, guys, is that his best plays are still ahead of him. Probably also, on Sunday for somebody. Second oh yeah. down and 10, Jack. Thank you. And Brock Berlin up under center with Jared Payton. the 37-yard uh, line and uh, you know speaking of the NFL hold on now we've got penalty flags flying as they get tied up Timbers flaring there momentarily and it's all started remember this is Joseph again for Miami when he had that helmet ripped off earlier in the game he still has hard feelings about it and has brought it to the second half Carlos Joseph number 76 Right there, there's where the, all the action is. He's in the middle of it. Now they keep pushing. Oh, there's one slug to the face mask and now they keep going back and forth. Har Harrison and Joseph are the two. So it's offsetting penalties. Ritter has called offsetting penalties in that situation. So it will be third down and five for Miami. So they'll come up now with a third and five. And uh, Fulmer with a few words for his player on the sideline. Trying to calm everybody down now. And going over toward the slot is Kevin Beard on that left side. Moore, the redshirt freshman, is outside him to Berlin's left. They need to reach the 32 for the first down. They throw it underneath to Winslow. Fumble! He goes back and gets the ball, but it's no first down. It'll be fourth down coming up as Winslow dove back, gave up some yardage. That, that hit popped that ball loose. I'm not exactly sure who got it, but if the, the if you don't see that the linebacker put his helmet right on the football, that pops the ball loose. Actually, it was Jason Allen, another big play in this football game. Remember the knockdown at the end of the half, the tackle on the slant pass, and now pops a potential first down play away with a great tackle. Ryan Monroe is back to punt. Jones going to let this one go. And it takes a Tennessee bounce to the other side of the 15-yard line. And that's where the Volunteers will have it. Tennessee and the SEC leading Miami 10-6. Welcome back to the BCS Spotlight game presented by ADT. 10-6, Tennessee. First and 10 the 70-yard line. Casey Clausen coming up behind that offensive line. Cedric Houston, the running back. Munoz, Herrera, Wells, Douglas, and Young. That offensive line. And Houston going nowhere. We've mentioned Munoz and all the fathers who are here. And uh, Jack asked him up at Knoxville what it's like having his father in the stands. It means a whole lot. Just the support. Um, you know, he's making the trip, my wife's making the trip. You know, to have family that, that cares about you to go down to the game and, and really be behind you, it, it speaks a lot. And uh, I'm fortunate enough to have a dad that's able to do that. Over on the sideline on this second down at 11.
cross play. On a cutback. Still going to the 22-yard line. So Cedric Houston, back from his injury, is uh, doing the best of the running backs here today. Time permitting, coming up on the Scripting Car Rental Post Game Report. John Terry and Craig will dissect the day's biggest game. I think it's good strategy by Tennessee to give a blow to those Tennessee offensive linemen. It's a hot day out there. You want to be fresh in that fourth quarter, and you've got to give somebody a rest once in a while in these tough games. Third and five. That's where he would have been. Let's see how it goes. Boston's going to use a timeout. Maybe he thought it wasn't going to go too well without 77 <laughs> over there. And maybe we will. Where's my left tackle, coach? Time out. ABC puts on Sunday's best. The rookie falls for a senior officer. Are you uh, hitting on me? And it could be his most dangerous move yet. Are you crazy? Ten eight officers on duty. Then Sidney Bristow's secret. Oh, my God. You kept Sidney's secret from me. Is finally exposed. A new alias. And he said. She wanted to have sex. She said. He raped me. And the truth. Oh, God, Jimmy. Will destroy one of them. How could we have missed this? An all-new practice starting at 8, 7 central. ABC puts on Sunday's best. They say the apple does not fall too far from the tree. For Michael Munoz, that is indeed the case. He is playing the same position as his dad. And he plays against Kellen Winslow today. Kellen Winslow Jr. is in the, in the field. Now, these two guys, Brent, played against each other in a Missouri game. Hard to believe, but for Anthony Munoz, he's got his dad's same number. He also has got his dad's same height and weight. The one thing he doesn't have that his dad has is a Lombardi trophy. Yep. Yeah, but he, he might have a lot more money someday because they're paying him a lot more than they used to. Aaron Sears is the freshman offensive tackle that is in there right now that is going to be the kind of person under the gun right now on this third and medium pass play, number 76. The freshman gets down in his stance. Third down and five. And Clausen on an 84 degree muggy Saturday afternoon back in the gun. And the Canes don't get turned, but the pass is dropped. And now Dustin Colquitt onto the field to punt again. Uh, Derek Tinsley needs to make that catch. You're trying to give your offensive lineman a blow. You're trying to create field position. Casey Clausen put that right there. He read it perfectly. You have to come up with that play. The Tennessee wide receivers have dropped the ball in this game two or three times, and it's been one of the stories of this Tennessee team all year. Not as many big plays from those receivers have they had in the past. Now, Colquitt did a brilliant job in the first half of drawing a 15-yarder. Booms this one. Parrish fields it, fakes the handoff to Taylor, keeps it, looks for the alley, and he is down at the 42-yard line. Omar Gaither comes down and makes the play for Tennessee's special team. Now, James, Jason Allen out of Muscle Shoals, Alabama has been brilliant here today. He at one time was Alabama State High School Player of the Year. He'll show you why. Knocking a possible touchdown out of Winslow's hand. Knocking the football out of Winslow's hands. And twice, Allen was the All-State running back at Alabama. But Tennessee recruited the young man and turned him into a defensive back. He's been brilliant here today. The 46-yard line, and guess who was there again? Number 18. And it was still a positive play for Miami on this play. Bounced outside very nicely for Tennessee. When you have corners making plays, three, four-yard run plays, Miami must continue to do that, not give up on the run game so early in this football game. We get word that Oklahoma's lead is now 63. As in 63, nothing sooner is over the Aggies. We're back after this one for our ABC station.
Well, Tennessee leading at 10-6, but Miami dominated the third quarter, 133 yards to Tennessee's 54. And with a four-point game here, Miami is only one big play away from taking the lead as we start the final 15 minutes. Second down and seven for Berlin. Play fake. From the pocket, got Winslow again. And Winslow battles his way inside. The 35-yard line with Wilson making the stop. 13 more yards for Winslow, and uh, it's not a bad guy to pick out looking for the big play. I, I like that, see, because they've been able to run the ball, they've been able to play action the passes, and that's the way you're going to separate Kellen Winslow from those linebackers and all those bracket coverages, a little play action pass. Yeah, exactly, and they've got him running in underneath like they did that time. And we get ready now for uh, Rock Berlin with a late flag, and... Uh, it came at the end of the play, so we are told it's unsportsmanlike conduct. Let's see now. Remember, Miami has been and their huddles way hard. back. I wonder if they know something's coming. Miami dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct gets Miami. The yardage was enough for a first down. 15-yard penalty, first and ten. That is eight penalties. Make it nine now for 91 yards against Miami, and another huge penalty in this game twice as many penalty yards against Miami as Tennessee the Miami pass protection has been better in the second half they have shorted up the running backs have done a better job on the linebackers coming in and Brock Berlin is able to step into his throws so move back the way it was it is first down and 10 Berlin on to set the screen and throws it incomplete. There's a receiver in the area, yeah. so there's no flag being thrown by the referee. It didn't look good Jason because Gathers, of the way Tennessee blew it up. Gathers, Gathers was number three, was right there. It was going to be a screen pass and was blown up that time by Tennessee. They read it very cleanly, and Brock Berlin held as long as he could and then just dumped it off. Winslow coming to the sideline, and Kevin Everett into the lineup for Miami on second down and 10. Parrish is off to the right side and there's two wide to the left. So a three pack here for Berlin. Stepped up, get it underneath to Kevin Beard. Well short of the first down. Burnett all over it and uh, strange play and Winslow's coming right back onto the field. Well, that should be the outlet receiver, and that's exactly what it was that time for Miami and Berlin. He looked downfield, good coverage in that secondary. The Tennessee secondary has done an excellent job of keeping things in front of them and forcing the Miami receivers to catch the ball and get hit after the catch. Not a lot of yak yards in this game. Not a lot of yards after catch for Miami. Usually you see that from them. Now Winslow's off to the right side of the formation. On third down, he's the underneath man. Berlin looks away from him, fires, first down at the 30-yard line as he went outside against Jason Allen. That time with the strike as Winslow was attracting company as he came in inside and the ball is down at the 30-yard line. Tennessee thought they were going to blitz over here because the running back is on the opposite side, but watch Gaithers come to the opposite side and pick up the blitz. Beautiful job. Disguising, go from one side to the other side, and that allowed Berlin to throw the deep out comeback to the side of the field. Nice protection scheme by Miami. They stole a first down. Miami at the 30. Here's Gavin. And a penalty flag is flying. The umpire threw a penalty flag, which indicates holding against Miami. It'll be on the, on the center. Rodriguez that time very clearly grabbed and just tackled his man. Well, let's check in for an update with John in New York. John? Well, Brent, the Buckeyes are trying to put away the Spartans and thought they had it done here. Greg Krenzel to Ryan Hamby, the tight end, two yards for a touchdown, and then the kickoff. DeAndre Cobb takes it. Look at the seam. He busts right through it. The kicker, uh, he wants no part of it. <laughs> Cobb goes all the way for the touchdown, and it's 24-17. Michigan State with a life after that kickoff return by the J.C. transfer who showed up at East Lansing and brought some speed to that return team. And John L. Smith continuing to do an excellent job here 
we have a first and 20 after the holding call as Eric Winston, the left tackle, leads the offensive line up. Peyton back on the field to the 36-yard line. And uh, tomorrow, the money title and player of the year honors are on the line. So join ABC for final round coverage of the Tour Championship presented by Coca-Cola Live at 2 Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific on ABC Sports Championship Television. As Charles Howell, the third and eight under, was the leader after the second round. Oh, you can tell from that promo right there, Brent. Tiger's still getting that club clearly stuck behind him. You can just see it every, whatever that means. They say it all the time. Second down at 16 here for Berlin and the Canes. Steps away from the pressure and has to take off. And Berlin is down at the 31-yard line, about the original line of scrimmage. That's Wilson, the uh, senior, making the stop for the Volunteers. And here is a big third down coming up now for Miami. And it will be Jason Gathers, the running back, replacing Peyton for this play. Remember, Miami started this game out very slowly on third down. But now they're 7 of 12 in the football game on third down. They've been good all year. 46% of the time, they pick up a third. This is third and long. Tennessee must stop them here. Winslow is on the left side of the formation. Berlin in trouble. Fumble. Tennessee's got it at the 45-yard line. It's only the fourth fumble of the year that Tennessee has been able to get this year. They have not been getting the takeaways. Coming from the end, Mapru comes. Watch it right off the end, right there. Should have been a hot read. Winslow leaves. Tackle busts on the play. Winston, and there it is, picked up by Mapru. And there's the turnover fumble that Tennessee needed and got as they get a big turnover on third and long. So now, Casey Clausen brings the offense onto the field, 11-20. They are up four, 10-6. Play fake, Clausen in trouble. And there's a penalty flag that would indicate a face mask. Vince Wilfork. Wilfork out of Boynton Beach may have reached up and inadvertently grabbed that face mask on the quarterback. He knew it right away. And referee Ritter tossed the flag and uh, now 10 penalties. Yeah, that'll be a 15 yard or two. Very dangerous play, but a I foul. Can't... Face mask infraction on the defense, 15 yard penalty. Very dangerous, but I give Casey Clausen credit. He knew it's just a big guy trying to make a play. He sticks out his paw and just happens to get the edge of the face mask and rips it right off. Clausen gets up and goes, all right, I get it. It's football. You're trying to make a play. I'm trying to make a play. That is the fifth 15-yard penalty against Miami in this football game. And it is first and 10 Tennessee at the Miami 40-yard line. Jabari Davis. Lines up at that tailback. Let's see if Tennessee goes to work on the clock. Nothing doing. It'll be second down and long coming up. We check in with Jack Aroot. Well, Grant, on Thursday, I traveled to Knoxville, Tennessee and spent some time with Casey Clausen. And I asked him if it was a special mindset that you have to have to be a quarterback. He said, absolutely. He said, number one, I relish it because I can be a leader. Number two, because the spotlight is upon me. But more importantly, he says, when things go wrong, it falls on my shoulders. I've watched him here on the sidelines all day. He's been the quarterback. He's been a cheerleader. He's been a coach, not only to the offensive team, but the defensive team as well. The Iceman is hot at it. Second down and 10 on the Miami 40-yard line. Carson steps away from trouble, but the second man buries him. Kelly Jennings at the 40 Seven yard line. Well, the Florida story very important here in South Florida. Let's check in with John. Important as well because they fell down to Vanderbilt first in the game, but now have a 21 10 lead. Ran Carthon from five yards out as the Gators are starting to pull away. Now, Maurice Carthon's son in the end zone and uh, Glenn Sharp of the Canes 
uh, cramped up apparently, and he is down there yeah, at the 17-yard line. Sharp, who's been playing a lot because Andro Roll hasn't been in the game with the suspension. They got a blitz on, and let's see if he pulls up on the play. Yeah, I don't know if a knee gave way or a cramp. Well, sophomore defensive back Glenn Sharp being assisted off the field and uh, seeing a picture like that seems unlikely that we will see him again. Now back on the field it is third down and 15 coming up for Clausen and Tennessee. They lead Miami 10-6 with 9.41 left in regulation. Good timeout by Vilma. He recognized only 10 men on the field that time and very quickly realized it and saved it. So after that long break, even with the injury, Miami already shorthanded, and a timeout is burned. Well, the shorthanded Miami Hurricanes, and you can see the Ryan Harris and Santonio Thomas not playing because of injuries. Thomas underwent surgery. Roll, the defensive back had been suspended. Now Sharp is lost. Boston sinks. Blown up by John the Vilma out of Coral Gables, who's had a wonderful game defensively for Miami. So Jonathan Vilma calls timeout to save the play and makes back-to-back -back great plays. Watch. This was the third down play. Did he waste the timeout? Absolutely not. Ten men on the field. He recognizes the senior, and then he comes back on the next play, reads the screen, runs through three guys, and makes the tackle. What a play by the All-American linebacker. Now Dustin Colquitt, the All-American punter. Hangs this one up into the end zone. And uh, that almost brought rain. Found one of the return men for Miami. He looked over like, where is that ball? I've lost it. Remember our uh, poll question today. Let's get an update on the singular wireless poll. Who's the college coach of the year? And right now, Bob Goodrich said that uh, Bob Stoops and Oklahoma are only up, what, 73 points or something like that in that game? <laughs> Pete Carroll out of USC. He's got a week off. He's recruiting. John L. Smith in a war in Columbus. Gary Patterson unbeaten with TCU. And uh, Ron Zook not getting uh, a lot of support, but he's doing an excellent job yeah. out there in Gainesville. Friend, is there a link on firezook.com that you can vote for him for Coach of the Year? I don't know if they have that link there. Yeah, I don't either. 10-6 <laughs> Tennessee, first down and 10. Berlin handing it to Peyton, battles his way to the 27-yard line on first and 10. Well, a week ago, some Miami Hurricane streaks came to a crashing halt. Their 39-game regular season win streak. They'd won 27 in a row in the conference, 18 straight on the road. But the last home loss here, you got to go back to 1999. Penn State a 27-23 winner. Here there's 8-25. For the Canes not to lose another one, and here's Winslow wide open. Over the defensive back to the 45-yard line, and a first and 10 on an 18-yard gain for Winslow. He now has 88 yards, and watch him make like the high hurdler. Yeah, you think Allen has made some plays? Well, this time, Kellen Winslow says, uh-uh, my turn. <laughs> Jason Allen goes for the legs, and the high hurdler goes right over him. See if Miami can build off the great Winslow play. Incomplete, second down and 10. Trying to come to the running back, Peyton, who slipped out. Yeah, you know, uh, Kellen Winslow that time was so tired from the previous play, he just jogged out on the play. A little look from Brock Berlin to try to get him the ball, and Winslow was just kind of jogging down the play. Might have called for a play where you bring in the backup tight end and give him a blow, because that took a lot of energy out of Kellen Winslow. Ryan Moore, the freshman wideout, goes out to the right. Winslow stays in the game. He'll be on the left side of the formation. Second down and 10 for Brock Berlin and the Canes from their own 45. And a whistle. And he's hit the penalty flag. This is going against Tennessee. The rushman did not hear the whistle. Dickerson did not hear the whistle and plowed into the quarterback incurring the personal foul no question about this one referee Ritter standing right there 
Yeah, it's it's the job of the player to hear that whistle. We could hear the two it fouls here. on the play. Dead ball, delay of game on the offense. Dead ball, personal foul on the defense. We will enforce both penalties. It'll be a net 10-yard gain. And a net 10-yard gain is good for a first down. Whistle blows. Everyone stops, even Berlin. And Dickerson feels it right at the last second. Just as he's about to hit him. So far, we've had Will Fork and now Dickerson make plays that weren't dirty plays that ended up being major penalties just with hustle. Can't really blame your players when they're hustling like that. It's going to happen once in a while. Eight minutes to go, and the ball is moved into Tennessee territory at the 45. Tennessee hanging on to a four-point lead. Miami still searching for its first touchdown. Berlin is back in the gun. Stands tall and puts in the hands of Ryan Moore on first down. And now it's time for the Pacific Life game summary. It was fourth and two when Tennessee ran the end around with Derek Tinsley, the game's only touchdown. Then Allen went to work defensively for the Volunteers. And finally, Berlin was sacked from behind, forcing a fumble. Now second down and eight for Berlin and the Canes. Well short of that first down again. Kevin Everett running in underneath, defended by Greer, the other corner. I'm impressed with both of these defensive backs for Tennessee. They have played terrific football games here. Greer and Allen, they're nice college cornerbacks. The uh, zone defense that Tennessee has been playing has forced Brock Berlin to be a little too conservative right now. Thought he had crossing routes open behind that little short, shallow route, and he settled for the shallow route. He needs to blink downfield a little bit more and get some chunk yards with the passing game. Third down, so don't get any bigger than this one. 651, third down. Berlin and the Canes need seven yards. They need to reach the 35 yard line. Berlin looking left, diving reception. First and 10, Miami. Ryan Moore from the Orlando area, the red shirt freshman, makes the grab. Perfect read by Berlin that time as they hurry up right now. Double coverage on Kellen Winslow inside. Watch him go. Two guys go with him. Go to the outside. And you got one-on-one. -on -one. Ball's thrown low and away. Perfect. So Berlin operating without a huddle now with the ball on the 32-yard line. Gathers. Battles his way to the 22-yard line. And close again on that first down carry. So Miami without a huddle and using Jason Gathers, the senior running back. Good job by Miami, and this is where Brock Berlin is most comfortable. Even though those co the coaches say that his stats are about the same in two-back under center as shotgun, remember his background is Florida shotgun and high school shotgun, and he looks much more comfortable in the shotgun offense. As they bring the chains across, let's just let them put this down here, and then we'll quickly get a uh, Oklahoma update let's watch there that much now let's send you to new york and john well that's a close call this one brent is not a close call 70 to nothing when courtney lewis is hit by Derek straight he picks the ball up and goes into the end zone for a touchdown 77 to nothing most points a m has ever given up 77 and 15 minutes to go they can hit 100 if they don't call it off. It, it, that was a defensive one. You probably won't call it off on defense if they give up another one of those. Amazing Oklahoma balance. Maybe you don't want to play those guys right. in New Orleans. <laughs> Maybe the ones we that don't get second we in the BCS can, might be the winners here this year. Can we year. go to the Orange Bowl, yeah, please? Please, or out to Pasadena. <laughs> now how about Tempe? Second down and short and Berlin. For the first down, takes it right straight ahead. So it'll be a first down in the red zone for Miami now. And time permitting, of course, the thrifty Carmelo post game report. John Terry and Craig, they'll dissect some of the game's biggest plays. And we'll have a tour championship goals coming your way here later today on ABC. And of course, Miami still hoping to climb back from the fourth spot of the BCS rankings. And 
jump back in there for a shot at least at Oklahoma. First down and ten. And Peyton back as the running back. That's Miss Lloyd. Line. Miss the line. Should be a big goal. And Peyton to the 12 yard line. Yep, it was clear to the right. They had missed the line. They left an uncovered tight end to that side, and Miami had the play right to the point of attack. This is the area, though, that Miami has struggled this year. This is their 42nd trip inside the 20. They only have 17 touchdowns. They need a touchdown here. A field goal is not going to do it with under five minutes to play. Second down coming up for them. First down as he crosses the 10 yard line. So it will be first down and goal for Berlin and Miami. Same play they ran in before on their drive. On balance line, they're going to pull Myers there to make it even more on balance and just power it through the strong side. Big hole, big gash, and you get Peyton, who might not be that breakaway that threat, but he comes and really honks it up inside for those first down carries. From the sideline come Moore and Beard as wideouts. Everett and Winslow are both on the field and both on the right side. And now Winslow comes over to the left. They looks in that direction. And a miscommunication with the wideout. Nobody was over there in that corner, neither Moore nor Winslow. They so jammed. It'll be second down and go. They jammed Kellen Winslow on the play. They were going to run a wheel route with Kellen Winslow. But watch, he gets jammed right at the point right there, and he was going to go out and up on the play, and that's why Brock Berlin had to just get rid of it and leave the play second down. Nice defense by Tennessee to take Miami out of a gimmick play that they're good for the touchdown on. Now more Parrish and Beard off to the right side. Tied in down to the left, and Berlin looks at him passing. Myers middle intercepted. He threw it up for grabs, and it is picked off at the seven-yard line under pressure. So Mark Jones pressuring on the play, and Wilson makes the interception, and he simply threw it up for grabs under heat again. Feel bad for him right here. Watch it. Winslow is going to go across. The receiver's all clear. It's a touchdown. Brock Berlin loses his way. He's got a touchdown to Kellen Winslow right there. He throws the ball too late and a huge turnover. Tennessee gets it back. Timeout. A very painful moment for Brock Berlin. Under enormous pressure, did not see a wide open Kellen Winslow coming through the formation. The reason why is his watch now as the heat comes from that side and he throws it up for grabs as he did last week against Virginia Tech and thus a very painful painful memory for the young quarterback Brock Berlin now Clausen with the fans howling handing it off Jabari Davis on the field Williams makes a stop so let me take you back Two interceptions. The first picked off, returned for a touchdown. The second picked off, and it sets up a touchdown. Again, Berlin was under pressure, and he has a tendency, instead of living to fight another day, just taking your sack in that situation and going down, he throws it up for grabs. So that is back-to-back -back weeks that that has happened to the young quarterback. Yeah, second that, down that play eight. did not call for a sack. He only had one guy out on that play. That should have been a touchdown. That did that was just a complete whiff by the quarterback. That out is called by Clausen. Here, here's the play right here. Safety blitz coming. Winslow replaces right behind it. Quarterback. Throw the ball. You got him right there. Nobody's covered him. Dipped the ball right there, he waits too long, he tried to throw the ball the other side of the field, and he forces it and gets an interception. Now, I would argue that the blitzer took the sight line away completely, that Berlin is not six foot five. Mark Jones is now, as Casey Clausen brings the end around, their touchdown scoring play on 
fourth and two, and they run it out to the 21-yard line. It's the same player, Derek Tinsley. Huge play. They did not believe they could run the ball inside against Miami. They used Miami's aggressiveness against them again. They knew that Miami needed a stop. They were ready to stop, didn't believe they were going to throw the ball, and they go reverse for the second time for a huge play. Fake inside, coming to the outside, surround the defense. Good block up front. First down and 10. Continuing to work on the clock. Troy Fleming, the fullback, as we look down on this uh, stunned crowd here in the Orange Bowl. Two critical moments in the game. Interception number one off the blitz. Interception number two. And it is second down and 10. And Berlin is left alone with his thoughts over there. The young man with nine touchdowns and 14 interceptions on the season for the Hurricanes who are in danger of losing for the second time in two weeks. Still has time to get the ball back. Miami has two timeouts remaining. Well, a reminder, ESPN Original Entertainment's critically acclaimed drama Playmakers concludes Tuesday at 9 Eastern with the final episode. Every season has one defining moment. Don't miss it. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Timeout has been called by Miami. Well, Garrett, what do you make about this performance here? I think Brock Glenn's going to get the ball back. It'll, I think Tennessee needs to throw the ball. They've got a senior quarterback who suffered through a lot. You heard the coach say that we're coming out here to win it. We're not going to just try to sneak our way to a victory. I think that uh, Tennessee's going to have to throw the ball for a first down or Berlin's going to get one more chance at it. Last time they lost two in a row. You go back to 99. In fact, they lost three in a row. That's three trips inside the 20-yard line for Miami. Two field goals to show for it. The coaching job that has been done here has been a terrific one by the Tennessee coaching staff of Philip Fulmer. John Chavis, the defensive coordinator who sent that blitz on that critical play coming from that side, may have made the biggest defensive call of the year for the Tennessee Volunteers. Remember, they're trying to move up the BCS charts. And it's Chavis who turned the safety loose on Brock Berlin at just the right time. Randy Sanders now must set up some plays. Gary believes they have grown a little conservative here with two minutes to go. Remember, Miami's only one big play away from taking the lead. Third down and 10 coming out now from their own 20 yard line. And the round going the other way. Got past Vilma. Did not get the first down, and now it will be up to Dustin Colquitt. And if ever there was time for Bigfoot, this will be it. The Tennessee coaches immediately run to the punt team. Immediately, they want to stress that Taylor and everybody else will be coming after him as Miami burns a timeout here. Roscoe Parrish looks like the guy will be back. Taylor is the kind of wild card. Sometimes he goes back. Sometimes he comes up and rushes the punter. Miami uses their last time out. Let's check in with Jack Arood on the Tennessee punter, Jack. Well, Brent, you've talked about it. Definitely the pressure is upon Dustin Colquitt. You talked about the fact that his father, his cousins, his grandfathers have all been part of a rich hunting profession here in college football. Well, one thing's interesting. Dustin played soccer, as you said, really did not want to play football. In fact, he pleaded with his family. Guess why he didn't want to play football, Brent? He thought the football pants were too tight. <laughs> he liked those shorts. Well, speaking uh, of tight, if they're ever going to be tight, this might be the time. <laughs> might not just be the pants, huh? Right. Gary, my friend, is the longest punt today, 49 yards. They do put two return men back there now. They'll put Parrish back there with Sean Taylor. 
Both looking for that one big play now that can turn this around. Inside of two minutes, Tennessee's up four now. A high boomer back toward Taylor, drives him inside, he fumbles! Goes to pick it up, loose ball! Loose ball! Tennessee's got it! Dustin Colquitt drives him down inside the 20-yard line! And now, limps back off to the sideline, and Tennessee is gonna come into the Orange Bowl and upset the Hurricanes. A team that could not get turnovers all year, especially fumbles, ends up with two key fumbles and two interceptions in this football game. The All-American is the guy who drops it, Taylor, and then can't get back to it quick enough as the ball pops up, and Tennessee is going to be able to take a knee. Derek Tinsley, who scored the touchdown, That's just it That's exactly. recovered what a the fumble. How about that pump? Into the wind, right on the sideline. What a play. And watch Colquitt. He'll put a little limp on right at the end to make sure everybody knows that he had that bad ankle. What a game by a punter to really steal a football game here. A 56-yard punt. That is his 17th punt of 50 yards or more. And Tennessee goes to the victory formation. And Tennessee makes a big statement before the BCS boys as they attempt to climb up. Of course, there's another way that they can win it, and that is should Georgia stumble against Auburn in an upcoming game, Tennessee has the tiebreaker against Florida. That's something that the Gators certainly don't want to see. And for Peyton and the Canes, unfamiliar territory here back-to-back -back losses and now they are gone as far as the national championship picture is concerned. Casey Clawson never made the critical mistake. That's how you have to play on the road. The senior just didn't make a big play and didn't lose the game for the other team. That's what won it for Tennessee. Well, we've had great aerial shots today courtesy of our friends at Outback Steakhouse and uh, we thank the Bloomin' Onion one. When you look at the Tennessee schedule now after this upset today, Mississippi State Vanderbilt and at Kentucky all certainly winnable I believe they'll probably be favored in all three the only question will be on the road at Kentucky but I think this volunteer squad will be the favorite this is a team that came to South Florida and didn't get the respect of anybody a 12 point underdog winning flat out Casey Clawson and the volunteers they knock Miami out of the road to New Orleans in the Sugar Bowl. There's Phil Fulmer over with Larry Coker. Jack Arood is down on the field. And uh, Jack, take it away, Jack. Getting the congratulations of his lovely left hand coach. This is like an SEC championship game. This football team has a lot of spirit and a lot of heart. And we don't always play but we have got some tough kids on this football team and I love this football team. Talk to me about two things, the leadership of your quarterback, Casey Clawson today. He's incredible, he's an incredible young man. He's an incredible competitor. He comes into places like this, which is one of the toughest places in the country, and, and finds a way to win. I'm proud of him. Very and you've proud got of him. the secret weapon in special teams with Dustin Colquitt. Dustin Colquitt is a player. He's a difference maker, and we use him well. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations, Coach. <laughs> There's the difference maker. The family down below with him. And all right, uh, Gary, well, cross him uh, off. That guy's out. We're not going to see them in the Sugar Bowl, are we? They're gone. USC, Florida State, Ohio State, Vodtech, LSU still there. Michigan with two losses would have to have all the losses up above them. Today's Chevrolet players of the game. And Jason Allen was magnificent on the corner. 11 tackles, nine of them solo, one forced fumble. And remember the pass he broke up in the end zone against Kellen Winslow. That wound up being the difference in the game. Jonathan Vilma, magnificent linebacker today. 14 tackles, eight of them solo, four tackles for a loss here today. So let's go back down now to Jack Aru. Jack. Let me introduce you guys to the Iceman. Congratulations, Casey Clawson. A great win, uh, guys. We fought hard. Cody did a great job. We had a great practice all week long. Came in here against a real good Miami team. Got a big W. Casey, let's go back to the end of the first half. It was fourth and goal. The decision was made 
to go for the yeah. touchdown. Yeah, we knew uh, coming in here, we have to, you know, hey, throw it all out there. We knew Miami's a good football team, and I told the guys, they come out, play loose, and have fun. And uh, took us from here. We got to go for on fourth down. Derek did a great job getting the end zone line. Did a good job of blocking. You told me in Knoxville that these are the days that you live for. These oh, yeah. are the days oh, you yeah. wanted to be a quarterback. Yeah. This is why you come to Tennessee, you know, playing big games like Miami. You know, we uh, came in here, fought hard, and um, big players step up in big games. And today, we did that. Got a big win. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations to Casey Clausen, Philip Fulmer, and everybody else involved with the Tennessee Volunteers. A magnificent win. Now let's send you to New York and John Saunders, John.